Luke Kirby. captured every single emotion that someone who deals with bipolar on a regular basis went through Griffin Dunn. Uh, my amazingly talented and beautiful wife, Christina Nicolova, was the cinematographer and producer. She was pregnant on set. Uh, Sasha, right, right, right here, Alexander. <laughs> and my amazing producer Jeremy, who managed to put all these jagged pieces together. And my great professor and mentor, who has left an enormous mark in film history forever, and all of us filmmakers now who are doing anything, oh, and, oh and to some extent, our work to, to Maestro Lee. take questions from the audience. Paul, do you want to just tell everyone what the inspiration was for the movie was? And let's just start there. Um, well, it's a personal story. Um, you know, when I first went manic, you know, I, I was a lot like Carla, you know, lost and uh, just saw it as a disease. And I came across the actual book, Touch with Fire, uh, which was by a real author, Kay Jameson. And it kind of changed my entire perception of it. That, wow, this doesn't have to be just horrific. And then I, I did find a genuine beauty in it. And then um, now when I, uh, you know, look at people in the street who are acting like complete lunatics, you know, I know the beauty that's going on in their minds, but most people look at them, you know, like, like I used to look at them before I got sick. And I was, I was hoping that, you know, people like you might leave the theater wanting to go do crazy shit with them. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get started. Who's got questions out there? It's a little blinding, oh, right down here in the front. Uh, Kay Jameson once talked about how when she was manic, she would imagine going around the rings of Saturn. And then after she started to take medication, she said that she, you know, felt better, but she would always miss Saturn. So I guess I wanted to ask, what was it like having to adapt something that's so you know, part of your personality and kind of learning to live with it or live without it? It took a lot of time, actually. Eventually, I resolved to living with no emotion. I just couldn't put my parents through it anymore. I mean, I remember one day actually saying goodbye to my father, and when he came, like, the look on his face was too much, so I just was like, all right, I'll live with no emotion. Um, but in, with regular practice of meditation and slowly lowering the medication over time, I got to a place where I, I feel like a sustained fire that's not going to burn everything down and now I get nauseous the idea of that kind of unsustainable mania that just is like a flash that is beautiful for one second but nothing meaningful will last from it. Another question? Jennifer? Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to ask Griffin um, why you made this film. Uh, well, I read the script. Uh, I could tell three pages in that it was a, a, a deeply personal story to the author. I just had a, um, I'm familiar with uh, bipolar, I, it's, it's uh, affected uh, members of my own family. Um, and in fact, I, as, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, this illness has touched quite a few members of people working, um, who worked on this film. And uh, I recognize the authenticity of it immediately, and while I don't, uh, you know, I haven't been afflicted with it. You know, I've had people um, who I've really loved be afflicted with it. And it goes to the exact same uh, 
reaction of, of feeling that they were uh, at the peak of their life, at the peak of their passion, and, and hurting and destroying everyone around them. Um, so I felt, uh, uh, you know, that it was something I really understood and had to do. Thank you. Okay, hello. Woman, uh, or I don't know, I can't tell, but I'll leave in there. <laughs> It was about a month before we started shooting. Um, and uh, we started going for walks together. And uh, Paul started sharing his story with me, and I shared my story with him. And, um, and then we kind of went from there. And I feel like I, you know, my biggest resource in terms of research really was just being around uh, Paul. Uh, so it was just a matter of figuring out how to uh, trust one another to uh, you know, uh, go where we went. <laughs> okay. Uh, Thank you. Oh, over there. This was uh, Paul's thesis film. I'm a professor at New York, New York University Graduate Film School. I've been a professor there for 15 years. I was here last year with the film by Darius Monroe, Evolution of a Criminal. Yes. And uh, there was many versions of this film. Just kept working on it, working on it, and I was uh, I was not really hip to you know, this illness, and he, had, uh, he gave me a great education on it. And I really felt that this film was therapeutic. You know, I really felt that he needed to make this film. And, uh, and I did what I have to do for all my students. You know, this is not just something I do for Paul. I mean, it's my job to help it's the grad film school is three years, I teach the 30 students, and those students can really do their thesis film. So that's when it's put up or shut up. <laughs> <laughs> and now the big thing at NYU is whether you're going to do a, a short or a feature for your thesis. So I'm just I'm glad to be here. I want to give a shout out to Katie Holmes. Come on, people. prior engagement, but uh, I'm just looking forward to the big thing as a film student, you know, get that first feature out, get it done and now keep it going. Okay, next. Oh, waving up there. over 
mean, you saying this <laughs> says it all. This is what I want the movie to do, is to open up this kind of conversation. And so, what really makes me happy is that we can go on and on about this, you know, when we go out of this theater, and, you know, I'm hoping that that'll happen with a lot of us, you know. Well, we've got time for one more uh, gentleman there in the classes. Yeah, just a couple things from Paul. The, uh, could you give us some, some bigger picture about how many people in this country are afflicted with manic depression or depression? And then also, when you've experienced this broad range of emotions, we're all trying to figure out what truth is. I read a study the other day that said the human brain collectively is 65% positive which means we probably don't see the world the way that it really is. The, um, so I wonder what the stats are, and if you know them, and then what your view of reality is, now that you've had this broader range. Well, um, to answer, statistically, 1% of the population suffers with bipolar, what they used to call just manic depression bipolar, but now they've added bipolar 2, which is not quite bipolar, but it's a... Uh, sort of mood swings, which don't reach the level of insanity, but are, are, are swings. But for the 1% of the population, it's, it's bipolar. And um, that population does see things. I mean, there was just a study on Van Gogh that he was seeing particles in the air that were created in spirals that the human eye normally can't see. It's a video online, you could see it. But, but actually, he was seeing these things. It looks like, the, like nature unfolded itself to him. And 100% of his brain was active. It's actually on his brain scan, you'll see 100% of it is active, parts that aren't in a, in a normal brain. But it just can't sustain. You know, a human brain can't sustain it. Um, I think that's all we have time for, but obviously you can see there's so much to talk about with this movie. It is playing several more times throughout the festival, so please tell all your friends. Um, we we're just huge fans of it here at South By. So, um, the more people who see it, the more conversations there can be about it. Um, so fill out all your ballots, drop them in the box. Thank you so much for coming. And again, please tell all your friends.